Hello, dear students. I am Dr. Mazhar Ali, and I welcome you all to course Introduction to Computer Applications in Management. This is our second lecture. So in this lecture, I will discuss to you the computer systems, the definition, the types, and the parts of computer systems, hardware technologies, and some software technologies. So again, this will be uh, the introduction uh, lecture of, for the uh, computer applications. So as I discussed to you in my first lecture on uh, introduction to computer applications in management, that uh, computer is a electronic device, means it is a machine. So any type of a machine is used to solve the human problems, or we may call the real world problems in a broader sense. Any, any machine is used to solve the real world problems that may be of any type. So computer is also an uh, electronic machine that is uh, used to solve the uh, human problems or uh, real world problems or what uh, uh, types of problem we are facing in this world. Computer uh, technology is used to solve those problems. So it is an electronic machine that inputs the uh, data, means what we want to do uh, with the computer, we will have to input the data accordingly. So when we input uh, or insert the data, the computer uh, will fetch, uh, take that data and uh, computer processor will process the data. So it's a, uh, some process of inputting the data and then processing uh, that inputting data. And after the complete process, it gives the output that they require to us. For example, we want to uh, any calculation to uh, multiply by three, the computer will take uh, both uh, digits, means two and three, and the uh, uh, operating sign that is the multiplication sign, then uh, the processor will perform the process on uh, two inputs uh, of the data and give the output that will be definitely two into three is the six. So this is the processing of the computer that how it processes the uh, data. So in this, what happens? Computer converts the data into information because data is a raw material uh, from which we cannot uh, take the uh, we cannot take even the decision on basis of the data. For example, two multiplied by three is a data. It cannot give us a sense of understanding. So therefore, we cannot uh, take any decision. But when process will. Uh, uh, computer processor will work on the data, then it will give the, uh, it will give us the output, and that output will be information for us. So the, the computer system or the processor converts the data that is inserted to the computer <clears throat> into information. So information is a uh, useful uh, for the user, and uh, when we get the information, then it depends on us either. Uh, we are going to store that data, that information uh, for future, uh, for future, or if we want to check or use that data or information in future, then we will have to store the data. So the formal definition of the computer uh, machine will be uh, an electronic device that inputs the data and then manipulate uh, the data or process the data and gives the output and then store the data. What we, uh, what I discussed to you in the previous lecture that the I post, I for input, P for process, O for output, and S for storage. So this is the formal and basic definition of the computer system. Now, <clears throat> computers may be, the analog computers, the digital computers, or the hybrid computers. Uh, I discussed to you these uh, three types in coming slides. Modern computers which we are using are digital. 
that may be the desktop computers uh, laptop computers smartphones and others these are the totally digital computers means they work on uh, binary systems so two digits combined to make a data or the language of uh, digital computer is a binary that is a zero and one however uh, older computers were analog even we are using the range of uh, analog computers nowadays but uh, they are not uh, pure analog uh, we combine the digital computers uh, to the analog computers however uh, in uh, the computers before 2000 or uh, 1990 uh, almost uh, uh, analog like if you, you look at the uh, ecg machine and other things these are the analog computers Another computer is a basically type of the computer that uses the continuously variable aspects of a physical phenomena, such as electrical, mechanical, or uh, hydraulic uh, quantities to model the problem being solved. I mean, in this data uh, goes continuously. So for example, if you look at the flow of the water, it's analog, or the electricity signals are the analog. They are and running in continuous way. Since the digital signals are not working or not running in that uh, continuous way, but they uh, run in uh, steps. However, the analog signals uh, run in the continuous way, like I told you, the water flow or the electricity signal. Even the, if you look at the uh, therm uh, thermometer or like uh, uh, this meter, and uh, several other devices, uh, you have even the analog, uh, risk, uh, watch, and so many. So, <clears throat> analog computers can have a very wide range of the complexity. If you uh, uh, look at the ECG, that is the analog, the uh, heart signals or ECG signals are in a continuous flow. So several machines are here, here like the blood pressure, the uh, uh, meters or your speedometer on your uh, vehicle, like on the car or motorbike or so on. These all are the uh, analog computers. So you may, may experience or observe several analog devices even. Even you have used these uh, devices. Another type of the computer which we are using nowadays, it's called the digital computer. So digital computer means any of a class of devices capable of solving problems by processing information in discrete form means uh, zero and one or in a step wise one step then second step uh, for example i show you like uh, uh, for example uh, this is the analog signal this is the analog signal so the digital signal will be like this. So these are discrete. So this is the analog signal. It's the analog. And this one is a digital. This is a different. So digital signal or digital computer basically operates on data, including the magnitudes, letters, and symbols that are expressed in a binary code, as I told you in the previous slide. Binary code is always zero and consisted as zeros and ones, nothing else. Zero means false, means no action, uh, since the one means true of some action. For example, if you look, uh, this is a zero. Uh, this one is a zero. Uh, this is a one. Uh, this is a zero. And uh, this is a one and a zero. Like uh, in this way, uh, digital signals are working. So digital computers are working on binary systems that uh, that is the zero and one, and the CPU is even performing on basis of the uh, zero and one. However, in the analog systems that is not occurring. This is a continuous signals, and even if uh, you see at your wrist uh, watch, it starts from. Uh, it has a toil sign and ends at that, but uh, it runs continuously. 
means analog uh, systems are working continuously uh, or in a continuous format since the digital systems are not working in a continuous uh, format now the hybrid system or uh, hybrid computers now hybrid computers are computers that uh, uh, exhibit uh, features of analog computers and digital computers you may say hybrid computers are combination of analog computers and uh, digital computers these hybrid computer in a hybrid computers what happened the system is uh, working in a two way in an analog way as well as in a digital way so digital component normally serves as the controller and provides logical and numerical operations while the analog uh, component often serves uh, serves as a uh, solver of a differential uh, equations and other mathematical complex uh, uh, equations like if you look uh, nowadays the medical equipments are the modern for example you if you look at the digital ecg the ecg the inputs the signals analog because our heart is um, uh, working in a analog way but uh, computer system that is attached with the ecg that give you the digital signals if you look at the ultrasound even if you look at the modern uh, washing machines your uh, digital uh, wrist watches and several systems if you uh, ett systems and other systems if you look here this system these are the analog and digital means uh, this is screen give you the show you the digital results since uh, what is attached uh, with uh, the other one that is the analog like the ct scan mri and several other systems you have electronic uh, the, oh sorry uh, digital meters even i now the vehicles are digital but uh, for example speed speed is a, uh, is a analog but the hybrid in a hybrid system what happens that is speed is a converted into a uh, digital system so the computer system show you results in a digital format that is called the hybrid so now the agricultural system other industries and say, several organizations are using the uh, hybrid systems mostly this is a very common system which uh, people are using so mostly industries are using the uh, hybrid computers now these uh, was just some uh, types um, uh, of the computer like the analog digital and uh, analog systems so nowadays uh, we are using as i told you the, the digital computers so uh, these are some parts of the digital computers because computer system any computer that is a uh, consisted of two major parts that is the hardware and software software gives the instructions to the hardware to perform any action no computer can work without these two parts so these two parts are not here means the hardware and the software are not here then computer cannot work so these two parts are essential or significant for any computer system hardware is the that part of the computer home we can touch keep in the mind hardware is a that part of the computer home we can can touch but software is a that part of the computer home we cannot touch but feel because software gives instructions to hardware to process that now these two things are also important for the computer system data and uh, user because without data this computer system is a nothing if we cannot uh, uh, we cannot insert that data then what computer will do so computer needs data even what you see at the meteorological system which uh, forecast the weather which tell you that uh, now tomorrow or today or day after uh, today after one week there will be raining or other things how how they predict that they input the data and then uh, uh, perform some uh, specific process and give you the prediction so data is not only the letters or numbers or symbols but each and everything that is unprocessed as a data like uh, air like uh, the, the 
letters, uh, numbers, symbols, your clothes, and other things which are not uh, processed. So data is also important in the computer system because we input the data. And who will input the data? Definitely the user. If a user is also a significant part of the computer. So if you look here, the, um, she's a user and she enters the data, so keyboard or mouse or mic and so on. And then the data goes to the computer systems where CPU, uh, that is the hardware. CPU is a hardware. Uh, it goes to the memory. Memory is also hardware. Uh, that is to memory store the data some uh, for a temporary time, and then it sends to the processor and processor uh, perform the process on this data, and then gives the output. And now this user uh, gets the output. Now, if she wants to print that data, then it will maybe print it through the printer, or if she wants to store the data, then she may store the data. So hardware and software are very significant part of the, the computer system. Without both parts, computer cannot be done or computer, uh, any machine may not be called the uh, computer. And the data definitely without data, no computer can work. That will be some idle uh, machine. So dear students, <clears throat> there are four major types of basic uh, types of computer. One is called uh, supercomputer. Second is called mainframe computer. And third one is called mini computer. And fourth one is a microcomputer. We are using the microcomputer uh, in our daily life. However, these three uh, computers are also important. So first we discuss the supercomputer. Supercomputer is a computer that performs at or near the currently highest operational rate for the computers. Means when there are complex problems or huge data or complex problems, or any uh, scientific problems, weather problems, uh, uh, space problems, we are using the supercomputer. So supercomputer is used for research and uh, a high level or uh, complex problems. Traditionally, supercomputers have been used for scientific and engineering applications that must handle very large databases in order to a uh, uh, great amount of computation. Even the supercomputers are uh, working on these both uh, tasks. So these are very fast and sharp computers. They solve the problems even in a pico and nanoseconds. So supercomputer is used for a wide range of computationally intensive tasks in a various fields, including the quantum mechanisms, weather forecasting, climate research, oil and gas exploration, molecular modeling, and several, several other tasks. Is we cannot uh, uh, limit these computers to these uh, problems. I just write a very little number of the problems. No doubt, these are the complex problems, but uh, these supercomputer solves even more than these complex problems. So the big research waves, <clears throat> the research waves which are working on the defense systems, uh, on the rockets, uh, aeroplanes, uh, and uh, atomic bombs uh, and other scientific problems, discoveries, uh, uh, and even the space, uh, how they will reach the uh, universe that is uh, out of our universe, or that, uh, how they reach the other uh, planets in the Earth, and so on. So these computers are super level computers which are used for super uh, jobs. Then the main mainframe computer is uh, not important than the supercomputers, but this computer is uh, very much important than the other, like the mini computer or microcomputer. So a mainframe computer is a computer that is used primarily by large organizations for critical applications like bulk data processing for tasks such as the sensors, uh, 
industry and uh, consumer statistics, enterprise resources planning, and large scale transaction processing. So, for example, ticket booking, railway ticket booking, aeroplane ticket booking, or the other industries uh, processing, and so on. So, a mainframe computer is a large, but not as a large as a supercomputer, as I told you, and has a more processing power than some other classes of computers. So, mainframe computers are often used as a servers because they provide services to the workstations in industries, in organizations, especially in the business organizations, health organizations, private and public sector institutions, governments, and so on. So, used in the almost in a large organization, not in the uh, little organization, but so mainframe computers are used in a large organizations and uh, handle uh, thousands of users <clears throat> different uh, all over the country, all over the world, and so on. So users access to a terminal. Workstations or terminals are connected to these computers, mainframe computers, and these mainframe computers manages and uh, those terminals or workstations and provide uh, services to the users. For example, you are using different servers here in the Nadra and the, uh, like in the social media and others. So those uh, services are provided to you through these mainframe computers. So these computers are very much important after the supercomputers. Then the mini computer. A mini computer is also a computer uh, that was similar, less expensive, and uh, less powerful than a mainframe or supercomputer, but more expensive and uh, more powerful than a personal computer or microcomputer. So these mini, mini, mini computer or main computer or supercomputers not for the common user. Even this mini computer is not for a common user. It is not useful for us, like for me, for you, for others. These are useful for the organizations, not for the home or other um, users, common users. So many computers were used for scientific and engineering computations, business transaction processing, file handling, and database management systems. So uh, th this is called uh, mid-range computers because mainframe and supercomputers super are not uh, are the upper uh, range computers. So power between uh, mainframe and uh, desktop, uh, you may call it uh, that it is a power or it is a computer and that uh, works between the mainframe and desktop. Means if you don't, uh, your work uh, or your job is not fulfilling by the desktop computers or microcomputers and you don't need the mainframe because your job is not uh, uh, by the mainframe computer, then your organization, organization means the business organization need to purchase the uh, mini computers because it handles hundreds of users. Since the mainframe handles the thousands of users. So uh, many, uh, com um, many computers are used in the similar organization, not in the large organization. In the large organizations, uh, we have to use the mainframe computer. So users access through a terminal or workstation to many computers. Like <clears throat> there is an organization that is consistent, in the, not a large organization, little organization, and you need the server. So you have to purchase the many computers that provide services to your clients and office bearers and office officials which are working in the organizations. So this is not larger than the mainframe but it is larger than the microcomputers. However, it is useful for the networking uh, in the mid-range organizations. And the last category is a microcomputer. That is a very common category. We, are, we all are using this category. So microcomputer in electronic device with a microprocessor is it's, a, um, it's called the central processing unit or CPU means like your computer uh, is a, a coming with the, within this category. So microcomputer was formerly a commonly used term for personal computers, uh, particularly any of a class of semi-digital computers whose CPU is uh, contained on a 
single integrated semiconductor chip. So if you look here, these are desktop computer, uh, laptop computer, your tapes, notebooks, smartphones, and these all are the uh, microcomputer or personal computers. And uh, these are used commonly in the organization, say the workstation or as a terminal, or even as a personal computer or personal <coughs> device, uh, electronic machine as well. So as I told you, <clears throat> that computer without hardware and software is nothing. So these are two important parts of the computer. That is the first part is the hardware, second part is the software. So hardware is a basically mechanical devices in the computer. <clears throat> Means home we can touch. Mechanical devices are those devices home we can touch. That are hard, not soft, that are hard. So anything that can be touched. So this is called hardware, like your keyboard, your, like your screen, like your mic, processor, or what is within the uh, CPU box. That is all, all the hardware. Software is a soft copy. That is a soft. Um, we cannot touch, but feel, but see even. So what you are looking at, your mobile screen of the mobile phone or screen of your laptop, that is the software. So software tells the uh, computer what to do. So software is a basically group of programs. Since the program is a set of instructions that tells the computer to do this. For example, you want to take, uh, get some, do some calculation. Calculator will tell the computer to perform this uh, type of the calculation. This calculator will give instructions to CPU or computer to perform such type of the operation. Therefore, it is a set of instructions. As we said, for example, you are arranging a, a program uh, with your friends. So what will you do? You will set uh, some instructions. At this time, we will meet, meet here. Then we will go there. Then we will do this then this then this. So these are set of instructions. Same computer is a doing, same software is a doing. Uh, that may be for the writing, that may be for recording, that may be for calculation, and that may be for graphic designing, movie making, and so on. Each program, each software gives instructions to computer hardware, that is the CPU definitely to perform this job. So thousands of programs exist here. Uh, several programs that are here for different purposes. So keep in mind, dear students, that there are two important or significant part of the computer, that is the hardware and software. However, these two parts are again divided into different parts. So uh, I discussed a very little about uh, the hardware to you. First, I discuss the uh, processor. A processor, processor is the commonly called the CPU. CPU stands for Central Processing Unit. So CPU is a basically brain of the computer because all processing is done in the CPU. Like uh, what we do, what we think, <clears throat> how we uh, take some actions, that is done in our mind. So our brain is our uh, processor that process all the things. Same, the CPU of any computer is a brain of that computer <clears throat> that uh, takes the decision that performs all the processing, that uh, perform actions on all type of the inserted data. So it carries out instructions from the program. However, CPU cannot perform any action without program because the program guide the uh, CPU to do this. Our program give instructions to CPU to do this. Is our mind give instructions to our hands to do this, to my mouth, to talk, to my ear, to listen, to my, my mind give instructions to my eyes, to see, same. <clears throat> Software give instructions to CPU to perform such type of the actions or processing. So CPU basically, <clears throat> sorry, Manipulates the data what, what is inserted. CPU manipulates or processes the data what is inserted. 
now computer cannot read alphabetic this is for us a to z it is for us or any sentence computer convert all the data into binary numbers that is zeros and ones so cpu read only zeros and ones nothing else for example we are writing here this is a computer computer cannot understand this is a computer but when we insert this then the controller of keyboard will convert the data into zeros and ones and that will go to the memory and then to the cpu and then cpu perform uh, actions like manipulate that data which will be in uh, zeros and ones and then uh, after the processing give the output so most computers have several processors because single processor cannot give you a fast or a rapid answer so computer say many processor and that's why modern computers are very fast as you write or as you insert any data you get the output 2 plus 2 at same time in nanoseconds computer will give you result the four so this this is this is happening because of the as uh, several processors so there is a main uh, processor that is the master processor and there are secondary processors that are the slaves which follow the instructions of uh, master processor so processors uh, are made of the silicon and copper another type of the hardware is the memory devices these are very important because memory devices store the data or store the programs or store the instructions like i is i told you in my first lecture there are two <coughs> significant memory devices one is a ram second is a rom so ram stands for random access memory random access memory it is called the ram now ram is a volatile this is not volatile a read only memory is a non volatile ram is a volatile that finish out the data when your job is a finished or when your system is restarted or cpu is restarted then again the data will be vanished out so ram always um, uh, remain fresh after completing the job ram remains fresh because it stores current data in the program so what you input so ram stores that data along with the instructions and same data and instructions uh, the ram sent to the cpu so this is the process For example, this is a user. Uh, this is a oh sorry, this is a user. Uh, it sends uh, data to uh, computer. Computer. Now, computer. Uh, this user sends data through input uh, devices, and then input device send data to memory. That is the definitely RAM. Now. all the data will not be sent to the ram but data along with instructions is data and uh plus instruction about that data that what uh, uh, has to turn on this data for example if you want to uh, get some calculation the instruction will be of the calculation if you want to process the test then the instruction will be definitely different and each instruction is a different for each job so always when we input the data the data uh, goes to the memory along with the instruction this is a very much important so <clears throat> the more uh, ram results in a faster system is ram is the high with the more capacity your system will be fast if ram is a with the low capacity your system is not be fast for example uh, you do have the uh, i5 or i7 computer but your ram is the uh, with the little capacity then your system will run slowly but if your ram is a with high capacity then your system will run uh, fast so ram is a important part um, uh, of the computer system uh, that is called also the primary memory and the volatile memory why it is called the volatile memory because it does not store the data on permanent basis Or for a long time, but it stores the data for short time, uh, and it vanish out the data as job is finished. Another uh, type of the memory is uh, ROM that is stands for the read only memory. 
I'll read the only memories are not volatile memory because it does not vanish out the data after finishing the job. It is a permanent storage of programs and holds the computer boot duration. So ROM is a use for boot up. When you turn on the computer and start your computer, what you see, what you get some instructions, or what you see on the screen, that data, that instructions are given by the ROM. So ROM has the computer in the starting, in the booting, and reach the computer to the operating system. If the operating system holds the, or control the computer system, then RAM gets big then other uh, operating system starts the job. So uh, RAM holds the computer boot direction, that how the computer um, has to boot. For example, also it identifies the problems. For example, your keyboard is not fine. So it will <clears throat> beep, it will tell you that your keyboard is not attached or not working. If there is a problem in a RAM, it will show. So if there is a problem in any type of hardware, uh, the RAM will show to you, oh, sorry, ROM will show to you. So it gives directions or help the computer in the booting. So these are two important uh, types of uh, memory. These are called memory devices, RAM and ROM, which are uh, used for store the data. Our RAM is stored on the temporary basis and the ROM is stored the data on permanent basis. And in a ROM, there are instructions to boot the system. In a ROM, there are instructions uh, that help in booting the system. However, in a RAM, we store the data, or a RAM store the data, what is inserted. Now, so RAM does not store only data, but the data along with the instructions. So another the data, as I told you, data is a raw fact. That, given, uh, that does not give the complete sense of understanding because that is not information. So after a specific process, it may be uh, information. As I told you, two plus two is a data that, given, that uh, does not give us the complete sense of understanding. But after the specific process of the calculation, it will show us the four. So four is the uh, definitely uh, information. So with, for example, uh, a person having a name, Aslam, now what is Aslam? There may be several Aslams or a Harichand, there may be Harichand, several Harichands. That, that is data, but with the complete identification, that is the information. So this is a different data. When we input the data, we input uh, the things, that is the data. It may be in form of graphics, symbols, numbers, and text, that is the data. So, however, computer organize and present the data uh, and converts the data into information. So what we get the output, output is not uh, uh, data, but it is the information. However, when we use that output for another process, then it will be again data. So this is a, a wrong process. We input the data, and get the uh, output in the form of information. And users are people, users may be people, users may be even machine, and that may be the robot and other things. User may be even your environment. <laughs> because, but today I discuss you the people and the machine, people operating the computer, people operate the computer that input the data. But in some organizations where automatic systems are installed, their machine takes uh, input automatically, or uh, robots input the data. So machine is also user as well. So most important part, user is the most important part of computer systems because without users, how computer uh, computer can not run properly? Because the user tells the computer what to do. Means user input the data and then the software tells the computer what to do. So user is also significant part of the computer systems. Now computer systems for individual use, the main computer is a desktop computers that is used for the individual users or individual use. So desktop computer is the most common type of computer uh, that is used in the offices and uh, and uh, in the homes. 
so user sits on the day uh, come uh, in front of the desktop computers and the computer um, means the user put computer on the desk or on the floor and it uses uh, see, means user sit in front of the computer so desktop computer performs a variety of tasks now it depend on the computer that either it's a single user computer or a multi user computer so single user computer is a that uh, computer home single user can use and multi user computer may be used uh, by multi users for example server even single tasking there is another type of the computer that is called the single task and multi task in single task what happened we give the single uh, task to the computer <clears throat> for example in the uh, dos operating system or in the command line what we do we may perform only a single job on the computer but in the multitasking like in the desktop computers um, we may use several jobs at a time like you may listen the music you may write ms on ms word you may uh, show the presentation you may watch the video even you may uh, perform some graphical jobs and so on because that computer facilitate you you know working on multiple tasks that is called multiple task computer so another computers are workstations these are very specialized computers workstations are connected to the servers now server is a computer that provides services to the users or workstations or server or we may call it that a server is a computer that provides services to the computers which are connected to uh, it if this is a main computer that manage organize all the connected computers and to provide them services what they want means uh, computer a input the data and a, a, a computer want to send the data to b now it will send data through a uh, server so workstations are important workstations are computers which are connected to the servers and they to give the uh, uh, result for example this is the workstation a a and uh, this is a workstation b now workstation means computer and this is the main computer and this is called the server now computer is connected with uh, this computer and this computer is connected with this computer and again uh, this is a workstation c this is also connected with this server now if a want to connect with the b a cannot be directly connected to uh, computer b but it will be connected to b through uh, server so server manages these all computers and provide services to all these computers also it keep the data secure and safe that no one can hack the data no one can tamper in the data for example a want to uh, connect to the b or uh, send a file to the b and b uh, send that same file of a to the c but what happens a send the data through server to b now b is doing some wrong to that data it tempers the data perform some tampering and then send to the this data so now server if there are some applications are installed or rules are defined then server cannot allow the b to tamper uh, the data so server provides security as well to the data so some protocols so these are the workstations which are connected to uh, server another type of the computers is a notebook computers these are very small and portable computers uh, which individuals are using means uh, they <clears throat> they may use on the way any way to office or home or anywhere or in a park or on an editorial place or anywhere uh, they may use that computer so the weight is between about 3 and uh, um, 8 pounds about uh, Eight and a half by eleven inches in the width and length. Typically, the powerful as a desktop. These are same as a desktop computers, but they are little in the size and useful. 
uh, these are the part of the computers of desktop computers may be used at the home or office but these notepad computers may be used anywhere uh, there is a battery attached with these computers so when you <clears throat> use this computer first charge the battery of notebook another uh, very common <clears throat> computer is a tablet uh, commonly called a tab you all are using this computer this is the newest development in the portable computers so nowadays people are using tab in place of the notebooks <clears throat> so input is through a pen or a touch screen you may input through pen or even you may use the touch screen or on screen board as a keyboard on screen keyboard is there by which you input the data run a specialized versions of office products so mostly uh, tablet is used for your even you may use for your office work uh, for your personal jobs you may play games uh, work graphical uh, child children are using uh, tablets for different games and so on so this is a very useful easy to take it's a portable you may take along with you. Uh, you and any at anywhere you may use uh, even the tablets are connected to internet so you may search the web, internet open different types of the websites use the applications youtube and others so this is also a very useful type of the computer another type of the computer is uh, handheld computers so handheld computers are very small computers if you look here this is the handheld computer Uh, also called the PDA, personal digital assistants. So note taking, this is used for the note taking, small calculations, or like the telephone directory, contact directory, uh, data, even data. But however, this is also useful. You may synchronize this computer to your desktop computer or laptop or other computers as well. But now the smartphones re replace this computer now. A very little number of people are using. Even no one is using because smartphones have replaced uh, this type of the computers. Smartphones are providing services more than this computer. So smartphones is also one of the type of the computers. These are the hybrid computers. How these are the hybrid computers? Hybrid means uh, smartphones provide you facility of the cell phone. There's a, a SIM chip. which you may use uh, uh, help you in a uh, communication and also pda like this one so you may make the notes open the ms word powerpoint and other things and save other uh, applications so even the web surfing, surfing email access and uh, networking means it's a, uh, again a computer complete computer that solves your problems and also it's a portable so smart computers have changed the or replaced the notebooks as well now <clears throat> smartphones gadgets apps these are for the individual use almost but uh, work stations and servers uh, and the desktops are used for the organizations so what is server server is a computer as i told you it manages the networks that manages the workstations and to provide services to each workstation or each computer so this is a centralized system uh, that for, uh, that is a uh, available at any place for example you are using the social media facebook twitter now you all are connected to a server that provide you services so all the computers are connected to the servers and the server provides access to and network resources it means you may connect it to other users even if any user want to share the file uh, to you even the hardware to you you may use the soft resources or the hard resources uh, through the server so server provide you many facilities in the multiple servers are and not only the single server uh, for example a big organization like for example in a facebook social media multiple servers are used so multiple servers are called the server farms because uh, for different areas servers are fixed or in a big organization banks like in a banks or other organization several servers are used so combination of the servers is called uh, server farms 
So often simply a powerful text of even uh, for a medium organization or little organization, you may <clears throat> make your desktop computer as a server. But in a big organization, you have to use the mini computer or mainframe computer or super computer. Uh, uh, it depends on the number of users and uh, uh, offices. So mostly mainframe and mini frame, mini computers are used for the uh, purpose of server. So uh, definitely this uh, digital era uh, uh, has changed the environment. Now, no one uh, can live without a computer. I think each, nothing, even the mobile phone, um, all people are using the mobile phone. So it means computer is essential part of our society. So definitely there is the impact uh, of the computer systems on one's uh, individual's life or on the society. And definitely computer has changed the work, uh, uh, working style. Even computer precipitate the one or individual in a later time. Means it, uh, you, may, uh, you can't get bored if you, uh, you are using a smartphone or any computer. You may keep yourself engaged. So definitely uh, computer, these computers are used by the all demographic groups. Uh, young uh, children or so senior citizens, old and other uh, uh, officials, non-officials, CEOs, uh, and uh, business organizations, and other organizations are using the computers. So computers are important uh, in modern age because uh, they provide information to users, they provide information to society, they provide information to masses. Uh, one can get uh, news from. Uh, all over the world, within second, you may get the news that what is happening in um, country A or country B or country C and so on. And definitely managing information is a difficult. But the computer will help you in managing the information. So uh, computer helps you in analysis of getting decision uh, or in making the decision system. These are very much helpful for the organizations, business organizations in um, getting the, the decisions. Because computer store the data, uh, uh, keep the transactions and connected to suppliers, customers, and others, and then store that data. And uh, after the compilation of data, analysis of data, the uh, management of any organization may get a very good decision on uh, basis of the available. Uh, results. So it's a very useful uh, device or useful machine for society, for business organizations, by individuals and others as well. <clears throat> Even computers are useful uh, to home. Many homes have multiple computers. Most homes have an uh, internet. Com so therefore, computers are used for the business, entertainment, communication, education. Even nowadays, it is very much useful for the kitchen. Uh, for your uh, home tuitions, home problem solving, different for different things, computers are very much useful. Uh, even the recipes are there. You know, each uh, thing you may learn from the computer, that may be the cooking, that may be the other things, <clears throat> that may be making some uh, things, even the entire decoration, the outer decoration. What you want, you may learn through the computer. Therefore, it's a very good tool, very good device for the society, for homes, for offices. In the education, computers are very much important. Computer literacy required at all levels because without computer literacy, no one can be called the educated person. If a person cannot operate the computer, it is not called the educated person. Therefore, it is essential for everyone to learn the computer, to operate the computer. In the education system, you see, it's a very much uh, uh, significant for the students. The students may learn several things through different programs, uh, uh, download the data, download the research papers, open the video programs, audio programs, open the lectures, and so on, and learn. So it's a, even you may, uh, if you are working in an organization, you may make the infrastructure, network infrastructure, and other things. And or other things, you may connect all the officials or employees of the organization, and you don't need to use the paper and other uh, 
resources even you may make the organization paper based organization by using the uh, computer systems computers are also uh, therefore it is a very good for the all type of the business that may be small business medium range business uh, up, upper range business it makes the business more profitable because it saves the time it give you the previous data by which uh, you may take a very good decision and uh, allows uh, see CEOs and uh, owners to manage the data and see the workers, employees, and uh, assets, uh, resources, even from the home. So, in a, therefore, it is a very much useful for industry as well, because computers are used to design the products, like in the uh, for, uh, uh, textile industry, mechanical industry, and other industries. It's a very good to design the products, to design the other things and to compile the data, to connect the people, to sell the products, and to provide information or analysis of sales and the purchase. So therefore, it's a useful for each and every category of the society. For government, uh, computers are very much important. Even the governments uh, uh, were the first computer users. Means when computer was developed, it was used by the governments. Therefore, uh, it's a very beneficial for private or public sector organization, means the government organization. Uh, it, uh, again, is in a business organization. It helps the employers and employees. Same in a government. Uh, it uh, helps for in a population, for demography uh, analysis, population analysis, for police cases, police officers. <clears throat> uh, and other calculations, finance, uh, HR, establishment, and several, in each organization, you may use the computer and solve the problems. In health uh, care, it's also very much important. But however, uh, uh, but even in healthcare, what, uh, it is revolutionized <clears throat> the healthcare. Now, if you, uh, you look at the hospitals, they store the data of a patient. And even after five months or 10 minutes, when patients go to the hospital, they open that record and they know that how was the, this person 10 months before. So all tests, all the reports, and all the uh, doctor discussions are available there. Even um, the computers are connected, all the uh, hospitals, means if one patient is going hospital A and after some days, is going to hospital B. So the, the hospital B may uh, collect the data of patient from hospital A. So it's a very good way. Even uh, computers store the data of uh, medicines. They are uh, making and expiry dates and make uh, appointments and HR systems, and other things, scheduling of the patients, appointment of the patients, delivery of the medicine. And it may be used in several ways that make the hospital modern and very good for the patients. So it all depends on the ability that how user uses the computer, how organization utilizes the computer. If computer is a just showpiece, then it's a nothing. It, it, it will not be useful. But if someone or any organization has uses the computer properly, then it is a very much useful for organization, people, or anything. Now, <clears throat> individual computer, no doubt, it is also beneficial. But when it is connected to other computers, then it's a more beneficial. So local area is uh, working within an organization, but wide area is working all over the world. So to view, uh, to know the importance of wide area or to use uh, uh, the computers uh, for multiple jobs. In 1969, ARPANET was developed uh, by the Department of Defense and um, it was uh, uh, connected the different departments or uh, different parts of the defense. Then ARPANET uh, was used to connect uh, different universities and defense um, uh, departments. And in 1973, ARPANET connects to the Europe. 
This is the urban that is a basically internet facility that is a, uh, developed in 1960 in USA and it was used for the Department of Defense of the USA at first and when uh, they have get the complete benefits then uh, the ARPA network connected the universities uh, in the USA and after um, connecting the universities and uh, conducting several uh, practicals and experiences and then in 1973 um, it was um, provided to European countries, I mean, European countries were connected to ARPANET to get the benefit of internet. And then after 1990, it is opened for the whole world. So ARPANET is the basic uh, infrastructure of the internet, what we are using nowadays. It is the internet, but initially it was called the ARPANET. It was developed in 1969. However, the work was started in 1960s. So in my mid 1980s, then in, um, uh, NSF NET was developed. That is the network between the supercomputers. So internet was uh, was the link to ARPANET. But in 1990, as I told you, ARPANET was shut down, and even the NSF NET was abandoned. However, the commercial networks take over. That is uh, that we are using nowadays. Now whole world is uh, connected through internet. That's why uh, the world is a change after 1990. World was different before 1990, and the look of world is a change after 1990. After 1990, world is connected. Uh, with all the countries of world are connected around the not only the countries but the universities and organizations, libraries were connected to each other and. It has made the world as a global village. So, <clears throat> after the uh, development of internet, World Wide uh, Web was developed. And now, World Wide uh, Web or WWW, uh, developed in 1993 by Tim Berners Lee. Uh, now, WWW or World Wide Web uh, about connection of the documents means you may connect to the servers, web servers, and um, get benefit of serving the internet. So nowadays, if you look at, um, uh, you may use different websites. You are using the Google, YouTube, and your organization websites, libraries, universities, through the World Wide Web. It means you are connected to whole world. And even you don't need to send the, uh, later, so the local post, but now email, send your message in a sequence to your uh, target of friends or relations. So email stands for electronic mail. Right? Uh, that is like the letter about the, what is your message or what is your letter and to whom you want to send, it will be sent there, it will be reached there within the second. So it's an instant uh, transmission of the document uh, even you may attach your documents, videos, and other things along with your email, and that may be transmitted to your friend or family or organization or office at anywhere in the computer. Even you, uh, with the help of World Wide Web, you may work for any organization from your home. Another benefit of internet is the news. See, before this, what we were doing. We were waiting for a newspaper or radio and listening the news or reading the news. But now, anytime you may uh, watch the news, that may be the local, that may be national or international. So news groups are there. That is even the electronic, you may call it the electronic news. So electronic discussion on several topics, what is happening in the world, that may be the political, social, scientific, all news you may know. So how this is uh, happening on the World Wide uh, Web, now there is a protocol that is called the FTP by which you upload your software uh, and uh, your documents, your files, means if you want to send your files, videos and other things, you have to use the protocol FTP. But if you want to uh, uh, open the websites, open the, the 
your files or any uh, type of the website, you have to use the HTTP, hypertext transfer protocol. So FT, FTP is used for uploading the file and HTTP is used for web surfing. surfing. Even you may chat, uh, for example, instant messaging, uh, you may use the messenger, you may uh, use the WhatsApp or peer-to-peer -peer services, even one user to another user only, that is a totally secure and you may share the files among the users. However, illegal to share copyrighted material means uh, you should not um, share the other's document, but uh, you can share your own documents to others, uh, user to user, that is called peer to peer. Now, nowadays, there are different internet service providers. Now, internet service provider is a commonly called ISP that provide you internet. Now, internet is the common, even you may get um, the, from uh, at your mohalla as well, where you live, there is the internet. So internet connected you to the whole world. It's a very easy to get the internet connection. And uh, even you may use the uh, internet uh, through dial-up connection or through ISP. Dial-up connection is a connection that is used through the phone line and ISP is a company uh, that provides you the internet access. So after internet connection, you may surf the waves, you may connect to any university, any library, any organization all over the world. You may work for any organization all over the world. There is a no boundary. You may work free as a freelancer. You may, doing, uh, you may do your business online. You don't need to, to establish a shop and so on. You may done your business online and so on after connection of the internet. So internet uh, allows accessing the resources available on the web servers. Means the web simplifies the internet. If you want to download the book, you may download. If you want to read book online, you may read. If you want to purchase any product, you may purchase. If you sell product, you may sell. You may connect it to your friends, family, through social media. Therefore, the HTTP uh, protocol is uh, used for these all things. Now, <clears throat> what is website? Website is a collection of documents where different documents, different pages are there. Means it's a collection of pages where uh, and each page is a working for a different uh, purpose. So document is a basically web page and pages are published to the uh, web. And now how pages are developed? A page is developed through the hypertext markup language, commonly called the HTML. Nowadays, WordPress is there. Other tools are there which help you uh, in uh, making a website in a few minutes. Means all for me, what type of the website you want to do, just write there. The format will be given to you and you just change the terms and words and write the description of your own purpose, of your own business. So your website is ready and upload on the <clears throat> domain. So you have to purchase the domain and the hosting server where you will host your data and the domain uh, and then run your website. So it's uh, easy. But if you want to develop your website, so uh, HTML, you have to definitely give you, uh, use the HTML tags for creating the web pages. So <clears throat> browser is a basically tool uh, that is used to browse the websites like uh, Chrome or like uh, Explorer, like others. So they read and translate the HTML code. What you, for them, you have uh, right any website, Google, they will read and translate what is code in there and display web content to you. So for this purpose, we are using the uniform resource locator URL. URL is like it is, for example, before this, when you, you someone is sending you the letter, so postman provided you, there was a post address, but in inter, uh, on the website or the, on the internet, there is a URL. URL is a, for example, this is the HTTPS. Now this is a hypertext transferable protocol. 
that is important then when you write then it connect you to world wide web this is a server world wide web is a server now this is a internet protocol that connect you to world wide web server now there may be different like a google like youtube like facebook twitter like in university website like anything is that there this is a domain name now this is a extension either is a commercial either is um, uh, net networking its uh, organization and so on so this extension is attached to the domain and then if there is a any other page like that uh, you may attach otherwise this is enough so this is uh, called url uniform resource locator now internet and uh, world wide web provide you facility of searching uh, before this uh, we were open books uh, um, or news or finding on newspapers and so on to find the things but nowadays it's a very easy what type of problem you have just you have to write any search engine like in the google for example common you write any term google will provide you all the related data so it's a very easy to find or search anything search engines are here uh, there's a several search engines like google like microsoft like others and so on so <clears throat> it's easy if you want to search a specific data that no other data may come or may not be shown to you then you have to quote the exact phrase what you want to search you have to quote and if you want to search two phrases or two things then you have to or more than two you have to write the uh, end for example this and this and uh, if a keyword that is near to that you have to term use the near or even you may use plus sign how will avoid the common words uh, like the stop words is not and so on is not uh, a, on in and so on don't use this type of the word use the sites advanced tools if you want to search in advanced level that your computer system or the website will provide you your related data or solve your uh, query so thank you very much dear students uh, it was this lecture was about the introduction of computer that what is computer what are types of the computer what are the parts of computer how computer works and um, what is the importance of hardware what is the importance of software what is the internet how it is developed and how internet may be provided to users what is the world wide web or web what is web server this uh, what is news groups what is the search engine these all things we understood in today's lecture uh, if you have not subscribed to uh, this channel uh, yet then subscribe it and press this bell icon as bell icon as well that you may get future lectures on uh, this topic take care we'll see you in coming lecture